Hello everyone, uh, CDU here, gonna be reacting to SCP-1548, The Star, The Hateful, uh, by uh, SCP uh, Explain channel, and I hope y'all enjoy this video, and let's get into the video. The entities waits outside the protective boundary that surrounds the solar system. They surge through the vacuum of space looking for vulnerabilities in the force field that protects us from their destructive powers. The creatures ran themselves against the barrier again and again, trying to break through. Upon impact, the force field shimmers a golden color and displays a series of thaumaturgical symbols, but it holds. Suddenly, something flies through the protective shield from inside the solar system. It leaves a hole. Two creatures enter our solar system before the shield closes. This may be the end for humanity. The sixth overseer sits at a computer terminal massaging the bridge of his nose. He has just logged into the Foundation database to gather information on an anomaly whose intentions are still unknown. The O5 Council wants him to vote on an extreme measure, but he requires more information first. There is something coming. He can feel it. And he thinks it has something to do with SCP-1548. O5-6 straightens his back and sits up in his chair. He logs back into the Foundation database and brings up the entry for SCP-1548. He knows that this SCP has been connected to some odd occurrences recently. But what are its true intentions? Is SCP-1548 trying to help save the universe? Or is it a malicious entity hell-bent on destroying it? O5-6 must find out. He scrolls through the first few entries. SCP-1548 itself is a series of solar phenomena that occur at the south pole of the sun. During these events, the sun's plasma morphs into different thaumaturgical symbols. Each symbol is tens of thousands of miles across. The symbols themselves have not all been classified by the Foundation yet, but there are three that have been observed multiple times. The first is an unnamed symbol that, when inscribed on a telescopic device by a person with thaumaturgical abilities, can identify psionic entities with malicious intents. The second symbol is known as the Calfastian Isle, which when displayed on a material, strengthens it immensely and gives it the ability to absorb kinetic and electromagnetic energy. The final symbol is the 12 Holy Owls of Cerinthium. When this symbol is affixed to an object, any entity that is killed by it will immediately annihilate and take everything in its radius with it. O5-6 jots a note on the pad of paper sitting on his desk. He has seen some of these symbols before. They are connected to the Ortothan mythology. The practitioners of this religion are known as the Church of the Second Hightoth and are a mix of human and alien entities whose main purpose is to aid the guardian deity of the universe, Rakmu Liosen, in combating any threat that may try to wipe out this existence. There must be a connection between the Church of the Second Hightoth and SCP-1548, O5-6 thinks. He scrolls back through the SCP-1548 file to the entry logged on May 17, 1983, the first time an event connected to SCP-1548 was recorded. A probe picked up the manifestation of thaumaturgic symbols on the south pole of the sun, it was odd, but nothing other than the manifestation of the symbols seemed to occur. This event was recorded as Extra Normal Event 9008 and logged into the SCP database. The event was all but forgotten until December 23, 2016, when the activity of SCP-1548 really began to pick up. On that day, SCP-1548 began manifesting protection symbols in rapid succession. Over the next few months, a dense cloud of ionized gas formed around the solar system. This ionized wall of radiation surrounded the heliopause, the boundary where the sun's radiation gives way to the vacuum of space. Over time, this cloud became thicker, until no light from outside of the solar system could enter. Foundation censorship protocols were quickly used to disseminate false data, suggesting that the solar system was passing through a dense cloud of cosmic dust, and that was what was altering the night sky and causing the stars to disappear. But as O5-6 continues to scan the files, he knows what the true cause of this phenomenon is. It must be SCP-1548, but why? Is the anomaly trying to protect us from something outside of our solar system, or is it trying to trap humanity within, with no means of escape? O5-6 stands up and stretches. 
Ah, that's enough for today, he says out loud to the empty room. He walks towards the door and reaches for the handle. All of a sudden, sirens start going off and red lights begin to flash. 05-6 spins around and runs back to the computer terminal. An emergency alert begins coming through. The Falcon Light 5 rocket that launched earlier in the day to bring supplies to the International Space Station has spontaneously lost 50% of its mass mid-flight. 05-6 frantically begins typing. He brings up videos from surveillance satellites. The overseer watches in horror as pieces of debris and bodies of the crew flow through the silence of space. The rocket looks like it has been cut directly down the middle and half of the structure has vanished from existence. What is happening? Suddenly another alert comes in. All communication has been lost with the International Space Station. Without warning, the space station begins broadcasting a series of cognito hazards. 05-6 quickly changes the channel to stop the signal from transmitting through his computer. Reports start coming in from around the world that anyone who continued listening to the cognito hazard signals began entering trances. Then their brain completely evaporated from their skulls. There is a surge of thaumaturgic particles in orbit around the Earth. 05-6 traces the particles back to their source. They came from SCP-1548. The signal from the ISS stops abruptly. The entire space station changes course. It is on a trajectory to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. The friction and heat will rip the space station apart. 05-6 can't believe what is happening. It seems as if SCP-1548 helped humanity in a way by stopping the signals from the ISS. But how can he be sure that SCP-1548 wasn't responsible for the cognito hazards in the first place? He needs more information. 05-6 searches for answers as more anomalies connected to SCP-1548 start occurring around the world. During a political demonstration in Berlin, a thaumaturgic way opens up that leads to a pocket dimension. Soon after, the appearance of the portal, Koru Archpriest Farah Atenas, the leader of the Church of the Second Hightoth, makes an announcement. He claims that the way leads to a shelter, which will protect people from the coming doom of the universe. The people in the area, along with the members of the Church of the Second Hightoth, make their way into the portal. Two undercover Foundation agents follow the group. After everyone has entered, the way immediately closes, and there is no further contact. What does the Church of the Second Hightoth know that we don't? 05-6 wonders. He continues monitoring the situation and looking for answers. Suddenly a message comes through all Foundation channels. It is coming from the Sun. It is not SCP-1548. Instead, uh, it is SCP-179. The humanoid permanently in space near the Sun. 179 sends out one clear word in its signal. Defend. Who is SCP-179 talking to? 05-6 thinks. What needs to be defended? Is it humanity? Our solar system? The universe? Another alarm begins to go off. What now? 05-6 screams. He brings up the alert. The screen flashes to the moon. 05-6 focuses in on where the alert is coming from. It is a foundation base called Area 32. What remains left of the base is reporting that SCP-2821 suddenly expanded in size, formed a wormhole that led to another region of the universe, and then vanished through it, taking 38 Foundation members and 10 anomalies with it. Sirens continue to go off. Distress signals are being picked up on every channel. It seems as if the world is coming to an end, and everything that is happening is somehow connected to SCP-1548. A static-filled transmission begins coming in from SCP-3417. The words are urgent. All our Tothans here. All our Tothans must listen now. The stars are lost. Static breaks up the transmission for a few moments before it resumes. Ago the first invasion occurred. The gods were unprepared, never comprehending the fragility of the universe after its creation. The worlds must fight. The transmission cuts off. Everything goes silent. A pulsating SCP icon appears on the screen of 05-6's computer. It is the part of the puzzle he has been waiting for. In 1999, the O5 Council unanimously voted to launch a mission called Seraph-1 to explore beyond the heliosphere. 
and the mission's true purpose was to explore the plausibility of extraterrestrial SCP objects in space. The message that O5-6 just received is from Seraph-1. It is relaying information back to Earth. The video shows the barrier of ionized radiation that SCP-1548 had created glowing orange at the border of the heliopause. The radioactive wall seems to be made up of complex geometric patterns around 6,000 miles across. Seraph-1 accelerates towards the barrier. It smashes through the protective shell. The probe has entered interstellar space. O5-6 knows that everything he is seeing is on a delay as the information being sent back by Seraph-1 needs to travel vast distances, and it takes significant time for signals to reach Earth. After passing through the ionized barrier, the connection to Seraph-1 is lost. Over the next few days, O5-6 tries to link the anomalies happening in the solar system to SCP-1548. The Foundation still hasn't concluded if 1548 is harmful or trying to protect the solar system in some way. Then a message comes in from Seraph-1. It has briefly regained communication with the Foundation. Most of the probe's instruments have been destroyed, but its rear-facing camera is still broadcasting. O5-6 pulls up the feed. He stares at the screen in horror as the images unfold before him. The camera captures swarms of unknown entities surrounding the heliopause. The bodies of the entities are asymmetrical with countless appendages and unknown structures jutting out from their cores. They seem to range in size from 10 kilometers to 10,000 kilometers across, although some seem so large that their size can only be hypothesized. The swarms crash into the protective barrier that SCP-1548 has created around the solar system. Each time part of the swarm rams the barrier, thousands of thaumaturgic symbols and solar flares appear at the point of impact. Two entities that are later classified as 1548 Omega-1 and 1548 Omega-2 are captured entering the solar system by Seraph-1's camera. Video from Seraph-1 shows that as the probe exited through the protective barrier, it created a hole that remained open for a few moments. During the time that the shield of ionized radiation was vulnerable, 1548-Omega-1 and 1548-Omega-2 entered through it. They are now inside the solar system. SCP-1548 launches countermeasures in the form of glowing red sigils that create shockwaves to slow down Omega-1 and Omega-2. Omega-1 is shaped like an eel with five contorted arms radiating from its body and a mouth made of impossible geometric shapes. Omega-2 has a tetrahedral structure that leaves a trail of black rocks in its wake. As the two entities move towards the sun, SCP-1548 becomes more active. It closes the hole in the barrel. Oh, 1548 is the sun. Okay. I'm, I thought I thought the sun could be like uh zero so one, but I think the so the sun is the uh the sun is. Before any other creatures of the swarm can enter, and then launches hundreds of concentrated blasts of thalmic energy at Omega 2. The flares vaporize the entity in seconds. The last thing the video feed of Seraph 1 captures before it cuts out is Omega 1 disappearing from view as it creeps towards the center of the solar system. It has escaped the protective measures of SCP-1548. After the O5 Council reviews the footage, they decide to deploy the SCPS Cortana to intercept Omega-1. The orbital vessel is fully equipped with experimental anomalous weapons and propulsion systems. The Council is sure that the Cortana will be able to destroy Omega-1. Data coming in from other satellites indicate that Omega-1 has destroyed Pluto and other Kuiper Belt objects. It is slowly making its way to the center of the solar system, annihilating everything in its path. The Kurtana intercepts Omega-1 near Jupiter and engages the creature. After 10 minutes of battling, communication with the ship is lost. Probes in the area capture footage of the Kurtana and Omega-1 in mid-battle when they are suddenly surrounded by a black substance and both vanish from sight. O5-6 and the other council members watch in anticipation, unsure of what has just happened. Then the black substance dissipates. The SCPS Cortana sits motionless in space. The entity is nowhere to be seen. A cheer erupts from the overseers and foundation members in the room. It seems the entity has been defeated. Then, without warning, the Cortana accelerates rapidly. It is on a collision course with Mars. 
As the ship hurtles past one of the probes in the asteroid belt, the Foundation members see an organic mass resembling that of Omega-1 attached to the hull of the ship. The Overseer Council watches in horror as the SCPS Kurtana smashes into the Red Planet, leaving a crater 250 miles wide. The energy released from the impact instantly ionizes the thin atmosphere of Mars, causing the surface to turn into molten rock. From the epicenter of the impact crater, a black organic mass begins to crawl across the planet. The overseers are frozen in fear. But SCP-1548 immediately deals with the entity that is devouring the surface of Mars. From the sun comes the largest SCP-1548 instance ever recorded. A solar flare is jettisoned towards Mars. The impact causes a fusion reaction so intense that for a moment, Mars shines as brightly as the sun. The planet explodes. Its debris is cast across the solar system. Over time, it will create a second asteroid belt in the orbit that Mars once inhabited. The Overseer Council is now convinced that the threat has been dealt with. SCP-1548 is holding the swarm at bay outside of the solar system, at least for the moment. O5-6 returns to his office. He brings up the file on SCP-1548. He is still unsure of this SCP's true intentions. It seems to be protecting humanity, but why? O5-6 sits back in his chair and scrolls to the end of the file. There is an update to the file by O5-3, something that wasn't there before. O5-6 opens the new entry and reads the caption. All that's left of our infinite, ever-expanding universe. O5-6 scrolls down. The image is a picture taken by Seraph-1 before contact was lost forever. It is a picture of all that remains of the universe. There are two dots of light, and nothing else but blackness. The swarm has destroyed everything in the universe, except for those two faraway stars, and our own solar system, which was protected by SCP-1548. But how long can it hold out against a universe-destroying force? Only time will tell. Now go check out SCP. Dr. Lola Bergman. So they are just entities that's trying to devour everything, space, stars, and planets, and everything. They try to destroy the whole universe. But the sun source, the sun source system, and the SCP is uh, protecting Earth by using a wall of gas. So that's interesting. Then, I. I actually like that he has a sister with her, but she barely ain't doing anything. She's just there. She's just there and she's just watching and just didn't do anything for some reason. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, channel, subscribe to SCP Explain. I, I love their videos. I haven't been posting a lot of stuff for a for like a long time. I'm sorry. I've been very lazy and trying to because I've I, uh, been working out I've been working a lot I've been working out a lot been working a lot working out for like two two days a week so I can uh, get into a little bit of restaurant shape but I hope y'all understand but well, I hope y'all enjoy this video and subscribe to SSP as, as playing again and this channel included and see you guys later